to the other big debate from legal and constitutional dilemmas. Let's look at basic lifestyle dilemmas. If I was to ask you a simple question, folks, which is the most livable town, most livable city in India? You would probably argue that on the basis of comparisons that you would make with Indian cities itself, you would probably come up with the national capital, with the dreams capital, or in Chennai, or in Ahmedabad, or Bengaluru. But look at the question when that question is put in the context of global livability indexes. When you look at global livability indexes versus Indian livability indexes, the story is a far cry. Now again, we can apply the nationalistic prism here and we can say that this survey which has been done by the economists is all biased. This is all a tirade against India. Like we'd seen when the status of education institutions, when the world ranking, rankings came for education institutions, a pretty similar story. But look at this. India's best cities. What the city which is described by India as the best one, where does it stand in the economist survey? Ahmedabad ranked 143. Bangalore, 156. Chennai, 142. These are the topmost cities of India, which have repeatedly been given the top slots, the top honors on ease of living business, ease of doing business indexes by the Indian government. But according to the economist, all these stories from a global standpoint are a completely different one. Okay, we Dr. Edmund Fernandez, founder of the CHD Group. I think it's very important to try and understand what is the status of cities and states in which we are living in. What are the parameters on the basis of which these rankings have been put up? Just to put the facts on the table, stability of living in a city, 25%, according to The Economist. Healthcare has been given 20%. Culture and environment, 25%. Education, 10%. Infrastructure has been given 20% weightage. This is how all these rankings that you're seeing have actually been carved out by the Economist Intelligence Unit. Let me begin with you, Dr. Edmund Fernandez, and let me ask you. The city of Bengaluru, which according to Indian rankings happens to be number one when it comes to the best Indian cities, but when it comes to global livability indexes, it's a far cry. Is this comparison, is this comparison like an apples versus oranges comparison? So does it even hold? You're muted. Edmund, you're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Just unmute yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Quinn, for bringing up this discussion, which uh, not often is talked about. We'd like, I mean, I would like to look at this whole scenario through different perspectives. Livability in terms of uh, city scale, in terms of health and all of that is fine. But what we need to understand is what kind of a world are we living in? We are living in a world and we are living in a subcontinent that faces cascading risk. Risk coming in from natural disasters, extreme weather events, and the public health consequences of all of it. Hmm. So while Economic Intelligence Unit might have certain parameters, I am sorry to say that we cannot be guided by these parameters hmm. because our world itself is completely changed by the kind of uh, cascading risk that we are facing. So as policy makers, as politicians and governments, we will have to evolve into a social health model hmm. that puts people at the heart of development. And what do I mean by social health? This is not parameters alone, but we need to look at the whole scenario in terms of happiness. What kind of a city are we creating? It's very easy to build a new city but it takes imagination to re rebuild an existing one. Well, Edmund, look, take a good hard look at the parameters which have been worked out. Almost 50% stability, stability and culture and environment. So if you look at it, stability, healthcare, culture, environment, education, infrastructure, essentially 50% of this entire weightage is being given to what? To stability, culture, an environment now therefore is this a comment on 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 you know on livability in terms of infrastructure edmund fernandez or is this a comment on the basis of political environment which seems to be say existing in places like bengaluru today it's a bit of both because if it's uh, a lot to do with the stability healthcare part of it then we are missing something major in this whole process because 
integrating a public health in all policies approach is a missing link in the whole global livability index like you take rural development you take urban health you take um, uh, urban infrastructure urban governance hmm. so all of this needs to really have a public health in all policies approach which the global livability index does not talk about does not highlight and even to as a matter of fact if we do not bring line ministries together how are we really going to address stability healthcare infra culture environment and all of it hmm. because every part of it is dealt with a different ministry each of them have their own cabinet ministers there so their priorities is different now in the context of bangalore as a city religion and politics is mixed up and these have become two sides of the same coin so what happens in this process is happiness and mental health is compromised now my submission here to the powers that be is keep religion aside and focus on developmental parameters let the global livability index serve two purposes for us hmm. what can we learn from it and what can we do about it okay. if we take this from a perspective of a state statesman hmm. bangalore as a city or india as a nation is poised for being a superpower in asia and and the pacific region at large over the years all right our friends and well wishers from bengaluru it's a great state it's a great city to be in karnataka i've traveled the length and breadth of the state on multiple occasions it's an out me i'd love to live in bengaluru but if those who are there in bengaluru are pointing us to a direction where some serious hard thinking needs to be done then i think for all the stakeholders for all the politicians it's time to look at bengaluru hyderabad forget mumbai and delhi mumbai and delhi have been up there for a very long time but our upcoming towns if they are bursting it seems that they are struggling i'm willing to ignore the economist intelligence should report as well but if there is a problem that problem cannot be solved simply because we want to convert hyderabad into bhagyanagar or bangalore into bengaluru nothing is going to change what needs to change is mindset what needs to change is a scientific approach as far as all the political stakeholders are concerned Thanks all of you for joining us on our big debate tonight. Let's just sit for a short break. More on the other side.